So this is lesson eight, and this lesson is called Core Hertz. And it's a it's a very short lesson, very simple but very powerful. Why does one person get upset and another person doesn't when the same thing happens to both of them? So we discussed this a little bit, how same thing happens to us that happens to the person next to us, and one of us gets upset and one of us doesn't. So what's the reason? There is a very specific reason. It's called core hurts, and core hurts are personal sensitivities. You probably know people who are, we say they're very sensitive. So if you don't treat them in a specific way, they can become easily upset. You know, you said the wrong thing, or you didn't smile when you should have, or you didn't encourage them when they did something well. And they get easily upset, and there's a reason for this. We all have certain sensitivities, which we gather earlier in life or even in past lives that we bring in to this life. And so when we have these sensitivities, we easily get upset by things that may not upset other people. And sometimes when you have a friend that has these sensitivities and they get upset, you may not understand why they're upset because you don't see any reason for them to be upset. And vice versa, you may get, get upset where a friend of yours doesn't see any reason to get upset. So, for example, we're working in an office, and the boss says something, it upsets the person next to you, and you just think, he's probably just having a bad day. The boss is probably having a bad day. It's not a big deal. It doesn't bother you. Why does it bother the other person, and it doesn't bother you, or vice versa? Because of these sensitivities. So, we'll discuss them. Core hurts create core needs. Core needs create expectations. Core hurt. Core hurt is, core hurts means that at some point in your life, if you were hurt, and let's say you lack something in your life that you really wanted and it wasn't given to you, then you develop a need for it. For example, let's say growing up you were put down. So if you're always put down, pretty much you're going to develop a need to balance that out so you want to be appreciated as an adult because you didn't get it growing up. People were saying you're not good or your big brother is making fun of you, or your teachers didn't respect your intelligence, whatever it might be. Because you were put down, you have this need to want to be appreciated. And then when you go out in the world, if people don't appreciate you, because you're expecting appreciation, it could be really, really difficult to take. Now, let's say you grow up without a need to be appreciated, or you were appreciated. And now, as an adult, people don't appreciate you. It's not really a problem because you don't really need it. You're not hungry for appreciation. So, something happened in your life where people put you down. It created a hurt, what we call a core hurt, which then created a core need, a need for appreciation. And it may be, um, let's say, another example might be someone cheated you. Someone betrayed you. So now you have a very strong need for trust. You don't trust people. And so you expect high levels of trust. You expect levels of trust that maybe people can't ordinarily give. So you have high expectations for trust because you were let down many times growing up. So that you were hurt and now you develop a need. And we all have these needs. Some of us have these needs greater than others, but we all have them. And when you understand your need, you start to understand why resentment develops. So if you look at your resentment issue, Think of what you were expecting. You were expecting something and the person didn't give it. And that expectation most likely was connected with a core hurt that created a core need. You needed something. Now, let's say I'm expecting you to do something, but if it's not a core need and you don't do it, it doesn't really bother me that much. It doesn't become a resentment. I might be a little upset, but it's not going to become a resentment because it's not tied to a core need. But when an expectation is tied to a core need, that's when resentment develops. Now, what's interesting about this is so often when we have resentment, it's because we're blaming the person for what they did. But no matter what they did, or generally no matter what they did, if there wasn't a core hurt we're trying to heal, which was creating a core need, 
for something the person wasn't giving us, we wouldn't have resentment. Let's say you grow up in life and you don't get a lot of affection. As an adult, you'll probably want more affection than most people are willing to give or most people can even give. And when you don't get it, you're going to get upset. And it's, people are going to disappoint you because they're not going to give you the affection that you desire because your desire for affection is so great, it's pretty much impossible people are going to give it to you. So I think you can understand how this works. So now you're upset because you're not getting the affection from someone, but the person's very nice to you, but you need so much affection that you develop a resentment, which really had nothing to do with that person. It had something, most of it was you, your core need, your core hurt. So in this section of the forgiveness process, we start looking at ourselves rather than the person and why we're reacting to the abuse. Because maybe it wasn't even abuse, maybe it was just they struck a core hurt, and as a result, we feel offended, we feel resentful. Whereas if we didn't have that core hurt, it would maybe be a little disturbing or maybe it wouldn't bother us at all. With every resentment, there is an unfulfilled core need. With every resentment, there's an unfulfilled core need, as we said. Think of any resentment you have and ask yourself, what need was I trying to fulfill? And as I said, if it's not a core need, it won't become a resentment. It's a very important point. If it's not a core need, it won't become a resentment. It'll just be an upset. Resentment, as we said earlier, is something which stays with you. An upset comes and it goes. Resentment stays. Day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. For some people, it stayed with them for decades because it's connected to their core hurt. And they've been, they've been demolished by the behavior of another person because of this core hurt or this core sensitivity. We use blame to relieve our pain. Whenever you're blaming, it's because you're in pain and you're trying to relieve your pain. Some people say blame is an aspirin or blame is like alcohol. When anyone's blaming, it's like a drug they're taking to relieve their pain. So you may blame someone who's activated a core hurt. Sometimes we blame somebody for doing something that they're not really to be blamed. It's just, as I said, we expected something they didn't deliver. And now we're in pain, so we use blame to put the responsibility on them. When you understand core hurt, you, really, you realize it's not always about what the person does, but it's about how I'm affected by it, how my core hurt is related to what they did, how my expectation is related to what they did. So they may not have really done something wrong or maybe something not that bad or something, maybe bad, but something I should easily recover from, but I don't because it's activating my core hurt and therefore I'm completely let down and therefore I develop a resentment. So the important point, again, I want to emphasize, if someone does something to upset you, but it doesn't activate a core hurt, it won't turn into resentment. You'll just be upset, but it won't last. When you hold on to it, it's because there's something core in you that you need. You need this trust. You need this appreciation. You need this affection. You need this loyalty. You need a certain behavior from the person. Whereas your friend next door, he didn't need that behavior. It's not a core need he has, and he doesn't get upset. I hope that makes sense it, to explain why one person gets upset and one person doesn't. As I, I said before, in the issue I had, when when I got upset because of the lack of trust, a lot of people in the organization were very happy because they were actually happy this person was leaving and I felt betrayed that he was leaving and they were saying, I'm glad he's going. So completely different reaction. I was resentful, they were happy because it didn't affect their core hurt. So let's do some reflection here. First question is, what were you expecting from your offender that you didn't get? Anytime you call someone an abuser or an offender, not any time, but many, when, when you call them an abuser and offender and there's a resentment, that means you're expecting something. So first question, as we asked before, what were you expecting that you didn't get? And then you find that indicates your core need. I was expecting trust, affection, whatever it is, that's my core need. And meditate on how, what you can do to heal your core need, on how you can heal your core need. What can you do? Now, 
a lot of the spiritual people say it requires detachment through spiritual practices, through meditation, through study, you detach. And when you detach, even though you have a core need, you can detach from your core need. You can just let it go. Because as we said in former classes, you realize how much it's damaging you. So you just let it go. Because why should I hold on to something that's harming me? So I'm leaving this up to you. I want you to meditate, realize what your core need is, and then meditate what can you do to heal it. Because if you don't heal it, it's going to keep coming up. It's not just going to be this person. If you, if you have an inordinate need for affection or appreciation or acknowledgement or loyalty and so forth, it's going to be a problem for you in life because you're not always going to get it from everyone and those people are going to upset you. If you heal it, it makes your life so much easier. So that's your assignment. Meditate on how to heal your core hurt.